If you want to fly a plane into a hostile environment, whether that's enemy territory or a raging hurricane, there aren't many better craft than an unmanned aerial vehicle like the Global Hawk. What's neat about these airplanes is that you can get them at a very high altitude. You can do that with manned airplanes too, but uniquely you can get this over a weather system for a very long period of time. You observe a hurricane as it develops and then runs through its whole cycle for you know up to almost a day. To do missions like that, the Global Hawk climbs to 60,000 feet on its massive wings. Frank and I took a walk around one. Do you know off the top of your head how many feet this is? Yeah, we've got about 116 feet from uh, tip to tip. And uh, it's a high aspect ratio wing. You're trying to get a bunch of uh, wing area out there. The airplane flies very high, oh, yeah. up around 60,000 feet. around the end and we'll walk back up to the front. Yeah, so there's very little... Uh, so it needs this much wing for the lift. That's right, that's right. You're trying to support, you know, oh, in the mid 20,000 pound range of weight up at altitude. And then again, you have this one opened up for us, which is fantastic because I've never seen the engine in these either. So it's a full-size jet engine at the back of this. Single jet engine, big turbo fan uh, made by Rolls-Royce. So is this the type of thing we would see on a, you know, a, a conventional airliner? It looks like the sort of thing you'd see hung underneath a wing. This engine you might even see on a, a small corporate jet. NASA has been repurposing military Global Hawks since 2010. It uses them to study and to monitor extreme weather like hurricanes. So yeah, this other airframe over here, we're in the process of decommissioning. It did a long, hard series of flights for us, but it was finally getting kind so of worn out. that was a very out. early one? Very first Global Hawk ever produced. First one. Very first one, yeah. And um, so we turned it into a science bird when the Department of Defense was done using it as a test bird. Global Hawks can be programmed to fly completely autonomously, but NASA, of course, keeps a close eye on the planes from a control room. The data they collect is critical to accurate weather forecasts. Yeah, everybody looks at the weather every day. They go to their websites. Yeah. All those website uh, information is based on modeling forecasting what's going to be happening anywhere from the next few hours to the next few days. So the instruments on these type of aircraft collect data that's used to enhance those models and try to make them more correct over time. So the next time you check your favorite weather app, the accuracy of that forecast might be because NASA has one of these flying robots aloft. <laughs>